Let's build something new with daily interaction number two. Hello everyone, John with WebDev for you, and welcome to the daily interaction series, where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. Today, we're gonna build a block reveal effect on load. So here, when I click refresh, we have the block passing through and then the text reveals behind it. All right, looks good. So this can make for a really nice homepage animation or you can have it occur when a user scrolls to a specific section on the website. All right, so this is what we will be creating today. Uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project and we'll start with the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's D dash the daily interaction number. So today is two and then the element. So every element on the site will have a D dash two in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes. And so that we know we're working with daily interaction number two. Then the next thing I'll do is add a section. So I'll add an element. I'll add a section and I'll give it the class name D dash two dash section. Then for the height, I'll set it to 100 VH. So it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well. Then I'll scroll down to background and I'll give it a background color of black. I'll scroll up to display setting, set it to flex, set it to horizontal, justify center and align center. So anything I place within the section will be in the center. Now I'll add another element and I'll add a div block and I'll give this div block the class name D dash two wrapper. So the text and the block will go inside of this wrapper. So for this wrapper, I want to give it a position of relative and an overflow of hidden. Okay, so we're gonna have the block pass through this wrapper, so we don't want anything outside of it to be visible. So we set it to an overflow of hidden. So now I'll add the text. So I'll add an element scroll down to text block and I'll add a text block. Here I'll give it the class name D-2 text. I'll double click to, uh, to change the text and I'll enter in block reveal. Okay, so I'll select it. Then in typography, I'll change the font type and the font weight and I'll change the color and I'll set the font size to something like 74 and the line height to something like 90. So I'm making it really large for demonstration purposes here. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is add the block inside of the wrapper, and this is gonna be the block that passes through the wrapper to then reveal the text. So here I'll select the wrapper, I'll add an element, I'll add a div block, I'll go back into styles and I'll go down to position and set it to absolute. Actually, first let's give it a class name. So I'll say D dash two and dash block. Okay. So yeah, we set it to a position of absolute and a position of full. So one thing I didn't mention, which I will quickly mention here is that for the wrapper, we set it to a position of relative and that's because we're adding an absolute position div, which is the block. We're adding it inside of the wrapper and we want that block to be relative to the wrapper and not relative to some other parent element. So by setting the wrapper to a position of relative, anything inside of it will be relative to it. Okay, so I'll go back to the block. So we set it to a position of absolute and full. Then I'll scroll down to the background and I'll set it to a background color of blue. I'll scroll up and I wanna add a bit more height and width to this block. 
So I'll select the wrapper, D-2 wrapper, and I'll add some padding. So I'll hold down Alt to change the top and the bottom padding at the same time. And I'll hold down Alt as well to change the left and the right at the same time. And I'm changing the margin here. So let me delete that. We want to add the padding to add a bit more width to the wrapper. So the block is changing as well because the block is filling the wrapper. So as the wrapper changes size, so does the block. Okay, so now we have all the elements we need to create the block reveal effect. So here I'll go into interactions and it's gonna be a page trigger interaction. So here I'll click the plus next to page trigger and it will be a page load trigger. So I'll select page load and here we can start it when the page starts loading or when the page finishes loading. So this is kind of a personal preference for me. I like to start when the page uh, finishes loading because I like the idea of the site loading first and then the animation. Um, I don't like the idea of, let's say, the animation and the site loading at the same time um, because, you know, you could have things loading and then an animation playing. So um, to me, I, I like, yeah, for me, I like when... Um, adding the animation when the page finishes loading. Uh, but yeah, it's just a personal preference. You can do when page starts loading as well. Uh, so here I'll say start an animation and I'll add a new timed animation. So I'll click the plus here and I'll name it D-2 page load. Okay, so what I want to occur for this uh, animation is I want the block to start on the left, uh, then come in to 0%, which is it, which is its original position and then move out to 100%. Um, and then when the block goes to 0%, I want the text to show up and then the block will go to the right. So here, the first thing I'll do is I'll select the block in the navigator, go into interactions, and I'll add a new timed action. So I'll click the plus, I'll say move, and I'll move it on the X horizontally because we want that block to move horizontally and I'll say negative 100%. So it moves all the way to the left. And then here next to timing, I'll set it as the initial state because I want the block to start on the, le on the left initially. And then here I'll select the text. I can either select it in the designer or I can select it within the navigator. I'll go back into interactions. I'll add a new timed action and I'll say opacity and I'll set the opacity to 0%, so it's not visible. And then I'll set it as the initial state as well, so we don't initially see the text. So now if I preview, we don't see anything, which is great. Okay, so now I wanna move the block back to a 0% position. So here I'll select the block, I'll add a new timed action, I'll say move, and I'll move it to 0% on the X axis. So it moves to the right and back to its original position. And then I'm also gonna set uh, an easing of ease out expo and a delay of 0.5. Okay, so it won't start immediately. So it'll give the site some time to load and then the, the animation will kick in. Um, so yeah, it has a delay of 0.5 and a duration of 0.5. Uh, so this is a total of one second for that block to come in. So after that block comes in, I want to reveal the text or have the, sh yeah, I want to, the text to be visible. So here I'll select the text in the timed action. I'll add a new timed action and I'll say opacity. And for this, I'll set the opacity. It's already set to 100%, which is what we want. And for the delay, I'm going to set it to one second so that the block has enough time to come in. And for the duration, I'm going to set it to zero because we're not going to see the text like fade in so we don't need a duration added to it we just need it to, to appear right after the block finishes its animation um, and actually one thing we want to do here is we want to start the text with the block so we just want to drag it on top of the block so they both start at the same time and then i want to add the delay of one second to the text so the block comes in takes one second and then the text is visible behind the block so the next thing I wanna do is move that block to the right so that we can see the text. So I'll select block here and I'll add a new timed action and I'll say move and we'll move it all the way to the right on the X axis. So I'll enter in 100% to move it all the way to the right. I'll add an easing of ease out expo. 
Um, and this is just a personal preference. Um, you can select any easing you'd like. And I'm gonna add a delay of 0.2 uh, because I like the idea of having the block stay there for like 0.2 seconds. So it, does, it doesn't just automatically move through the wrapper. Like, so it comes in, pauses for 0.2 seconds, and then exits to the right. Um, and that's it. So now if I preview, we have the block reveal effect. And yeah, that's all there is to it. I might try to change the timing, or actually no, that, that looks good, 0.5. I could make it a bit quicker, maybe set it to 0.3 for the duration, but we'll leave it at 0.5 for now. All right, looks good. So let's do this one more time. So I'll go into the navigator and I'll copy the D-2 wrapper. So I'll hold down Command C to copy and then Command V to paste. Then for the section, I'll select the section and set the flex to vertical so that these blocks are on top of each other. Then I'll select the second block. I'll give it a combo class of second and I'll scroll down to background and I'll change the background color okay, to this magenta here. And I'll also set the, set the display to none so we can change the text. So yes, set the display to none for the block so we can um, yeah, change the text here. And then I'll go into the navigator, select the block again, and I'll say display block so that the block comes in again. All right, and then for the wrapper, I'll select D-2 wrapper. And I'll also give this a combo class of second so we can apply individual properties to it. And for this, I'll just move it to the right, maybe 300 pixels. Yeah, something like that and I'll change the width as well okay and I'll bring it a little bit on top of the first one so I'll add a negative margin so that this first pink one is on top of this blue one all right yeah so I just added a bit more padding moved it to the right uh, using margin and yeah looks good so let's go back into the interaction I'll add a new page trigger I'll say page load and then when page finishes loading I'll start an animation and I'll duplicate the first D-2 page load. I'll duplicate it because it has a lot of the settings we already need. And I'll select it, click, click into it, and I'll name this D-2 page load second. So here all I have to do is click on each uh, element, then right click, change target. So this is the block. I'll go back into the navigator and select the second block. And then the text, I'll right click, change target, select the second text. Then the second, the block, I'll right click, change target, select the second block. Then the text, right click, change target, select the second text. Then the last block here, right click, change target, and I'll select the second block. And that's it, so now if I preview, they both reveal. Uh, pretty simple. Um, and one last thing I wanna do, I wanna add a bit of delay to the second block uh, the second block reveal so I'll go into the interaction and for the move I'm going to add a delay of 0.7 so now it's a total of 1.2 seconds because we added a delay of yeah 0.7 and it has a duration of 0.5 so for the text we want to add a delay of 1.2 seconds uh, yeah yeah 1.2 seconds um, so that the block comes in and then the text shows up and then the block uh, moves to the right so now if I preview, we have a little bit of delay between each block reveal. All right, looks good. So that is how we create a block reveal effect in Webflow. Um, if you have any questions about anything I went over, uh, let me know in the comment section below, and I'd be, I'd be happy to discuss or answer any questions you might have. All right, looks good. So that is it for daily interaction number two, the block reveal effect on load in Webflow. To view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.